few weeks back, I made some great little nesting rope bowls and I got addicted to these projects and I found this great book called Zigzag Rope Sewing and we're gonna make another project today. All right, so like I said, I got hooked once I started making these rope bowls and all of the projects that I found in this awesome book. It's called Zigzag Rope Sewing. It has 16 different little projects for you to use around the house. So I just dove right in and I bought myself a full spool. This is from the same company that those kits were from. This is Mountain Thread Company. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about this product. It is made here in the United States and it is 100% cotton rope. And so for a lot of these home projects, especially the one we're making today, um, because it'll be used in the kitchen, you want to make sure that it's 100% cotton um, if you're going to be using it around, you know, hot dishes or anything like that, because anything that is synthetic can burn or melt and we don't want that to happen. So just like we want the rope to be cotton, we want our thread to be cotton and our fabric that we're using to be 100% cotton as well. So this is actually a fabulous scrap buster project. That's what they use in the book. But I had this adorable little um, Tula Pink, I think it's called Tiny Coordinates. It's just really small scale prints in all these fun bright colors hanging around. And so I just chopped them up into little pieces. And let me show you what I did. I just grabbed a few different colors from my charm pack just mixed it up a little so I had some variety. Let's get three or four different ones here. And maybe a pink. This purple's nice. We'll go with this. So I'll just stack these up now. One on top of the other. And I like to do no more than four at a time. And like I said, if you have scraps, be sure to just use those. But you want pretty small pieces for this project. So I'm going to cut these first into one inch strips because they recommend no pieces larger than one by three. So I'm just gonna make a cut and just make my way all the way across my five inch square. There we go. Just like so. And then now I'm just gonna kind of willy nilly cut these different sizes because I don't want them to all be even. The variety is what makes it interesting and fun. And now I'm just making myself some scraps here. There we go. So now I have a variety of sizes that are all about one inch wide and varying lengths. So as beyond the scraps that you're going to need, you're going to need 10 yards of that cotton rope. I went ahead and spooled this off and measured it ahead of time. Um, and one trick, if you're tall like me, I just like pull my arm out like this. And this is about a yard and that's close enough for me. So I just go one, two, three, and it's easier for me to do it that way than um, laying it out and measuring it on my cutting mat. Of course you can do it that way as well. Just find whatever works for you. And remember that these measurements are fairly accurate and they're going to shift a little bit depending on how tight you lay your rope in. Um, it's just one of those things that's really forgiving. So don't stress too much about that. Now that we have all of our pieces prepped and ready, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to pull this over to the sewing machine here. Get this stuff out of my way. So one thing I want to talk about is when you are starting I put a little piece of tape on the end here so that it wouldn't fray. We are going to make a little coil. And so let me just start right here. I'm just gonna roll that around. Just like so. Until we get about three or four times around. Looks just like that. All right, so now that you have this wrapped around, you can put a pin through here if you want, but I find it easier to just hold it tight in my hands, but I'm gonna lay it down here so you can kind of see what I've got going on. 
you can see my rope is spooling around and then I have this tail of the rope coming down to my right hand side. And that's the way that I wanna take this to the machine. So I'm gonna pinch this again, move it to the machine here. Now to begin, there's a couple things that you wanna make sure of so that you are successful with this project. So you need a machine that has a zigzag stitch, of course, so um, I have that ready to go. And these first few stitches that we're gonna take, we are going to have our stitch length at about, oh, I don't know, one and a half to two, somewhere in there, pretty tight stitches. And then the stitch width, the width of that zigzag, I turn it all the way up to seven. I found that to be the easiest to work with. And so we are gonna just start by making an X across these first coils that we made. So I'm gonna put this under the machine and I'm gonna sew straight across. Right now I'm not following around the coil. And I do kind of back up at the start and stop just because I want this to be nice and secure. And so then we will lift our presser foot. I've got my first row there. And I'll trim my threads. I do kind of take the time to trim these as I go because they can get in the way as you're working later. And now that you have that first row of stitching, it's a lot easier to work with because it's already kind of holding that spool together. You can see that it's keeping that coil shape. But we're gonna go ahead now and finish off that X. So we're gonna turn this and stitch in the other direction in the exact same way. There we go. Again, clipping my threads. And now we're gonna go in the opposite direction of where we have that X and we're gonna put an X in between so that we're making really secure there in the center. So I'm just lining up in between those two rows of stitches. I know it's hard to see with this coordinating thread, but that is what we're doing. And there's some great diagrams in the book that explain all of this as well. There we go, and trim, and one more row of this stitching, and then we'll be ready to go all the way around. Oops. Okay, now our center is all secure. Take one final time here to just trim all of these out of the way. Make sure everything is lined up the way that we want it. So we, we've got all of our stitching there and the coil is coming down into the right, which is exactly how we want it. And so now I'm gonna set this up to continue sewing all the way around this circle, which means I need to um, lengthen my stitch length up to about a four. So I've just adjusted this here. And then now you can see where the rope is not attached from that first line of stitching. And so that's where I'm gonna start my zigzag. I'm gonna come back there. And when you begin, you wanna take your time and go really slow because these first few coils, when it's small, is the trickiest part. So I am just going to start stitching, making sure I'm catching both sides. I'm back stitching a little bit there and then just slowly turn this. And if you have a center mark on your presser foot, you wanna keep where the two ropes are joining lined up right with that center mark. That's kind of what you're looking for because then you know your needle is gonna catch both sides. So I'm gonna do a couple spools around this center just to make it a little bit larger. Okay, and once I've made a few rounds around that center so it's easier to work with, now we can start adding our scraps of fabric. So I'm just gonna pick up a little piece here and I'm gonna wrap this around the rope 
This takes a little bit of practice, but like I said earlier, this is way more forgiving than you realize. And so I'm just gonna get this in here. So it lays down just like that and pinch the end with my fingers, just like so. You can see kind of what I'm working with. And then we're just gonna ease this along and start continuing to add this around. And as it comes around the back side, I don't know if you can see, this is a little uneven, but I'm not worried about that because it's gonna work out as I continue to add rope. So I'm gonna take a few more stitches, add another piece, got this little red one, just wrapping that around. And then we're just gonna keep going. Now when I add a piece of fabric, I usually like to do at least one coil around again, just to give some separation, especially on the inside few rounds. There we go, and go a little bit farther. Now as I get past this red scrap. I think I'll add one more. All right, I'm gonna add this piece in here now. Just kind of wrap it around. You can see some of the ends are showing. None of that matters. We're just gonna keep going. All right, so I am just gonna keep continuing around in the same way until I get to about 10 to 12 inches of rope left and I'll show you how to finish this off. All right, so I've got just a little bit left here. I'm gonna go ahead and backstitch. Usually you would do all of this under the machine, but I want to be sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. So I am just gonna clip these threads. So you can see I've left this little tail here and all we're gonna do is continue this around and then as we get to the end of this, I'm gonna fold it back on itself about like so and tuck it alongside. And then when we get up here, we're gonna shorten our stitch length again and we're gonna back stitch over where all of that meets and it's gonna leave this cute little loop on the end of our trivet. So now let's go ahead and put this back under the machine and I'll finish that off exactly like that. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch to get me started again. So we don't want that to come unrolled. Do you wanna kinda of keep this flat because remember when we tilt it, that's how we add a curve. We learned that from making the bowls. Getting close to the end now, so I'm gonna take that end of the loop, push it back under so it meets up with the side of the bowl. I'm going to shorten my stitch length for the end here, back down between one and a half and two, and we are gonna finish this off. And I like to back stitch a bunch over that little loop area just because I want it to be nice and secure. So I'll back up, go forward, back up again. There we go. And now we can pull this out of here and trim our threads. And there we have this cute little confetti trivet using some of our fabric scraps. Um, I love this project so much. So the basic instructions with the 10 yards of rope that are listed in the book here give you this trivet that ends up about nine inches. But one of the things I love about this book is it has all kinds of great tips about how to customize these projects, make them larger. So you can see here, I doubled my rope and got a much larger trivet. I thought this would be so cute even for like chargers underneath your plates. And remember, you can use whatever color of fabric scraps you want to make this fit your decor or the decor of whoever you're making these great little gifts for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, this awesome confetti trivet. 
from the Zigzag Rope Sewing Book, and I will see you next time on At Home with Misty. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching At Home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.